This is part two of three, looking at chapter 13, and we're focusing on microbe and human interactions. So the first part of this chapter, we looked at the normal flora and how important those normal flora are. This next part of the chapter, we're going to look at um, how infections progress through their different stages. So the major factors in the development of infections, so we're going to be looking at pathogens, which are agents that have the potential to cause disease. So some pathogens are called true pathogens. They're capable of causing disease in healthy persons with normal immune defenses. So true pathogens include um, like the cold virus or influenza. So even if you're normally healthy, you don't have any problems. If you pick up one of those viruses, you're probably going to end up getting sick. So those are the true pathogens. Opportunistic pathogens, these are organisms that cause disease when the host defense mechanisms are already compromised or when the microorganism they get into or grow in part of the body that's not natural to them. So opportunistic pathogens, you can also have an endogenous infection where your normal flora get into a part of the body that they normally don't um, live in. So there's these different types of pathogens. Opportunistic pathogens, some of them, they won't make you sick if you have a really good defense mechanism already established if you're normally healthy. And the severity of the disease, so how sick you feel, it depends on the virulence of the pathogen. So the virulence is just the characteristics or structure of that microorganism that contributes to its ability to cause disease. Um, and these structures or characteristics are called virulence factors. So we'll get into different examples of virulence factors, but one example is if uh, bacteria has flagella, it's able to swim, it's able to move through the body. So that contributes to it being able to get to different parts of the body and causing damage, causing disease in those different parts of the body. So we're going to be looking at um, this chart right here. So this is kind of the main slide for this section of the chapter. So we're going to be looking at how microorganisms get into the body and then how they cause disease and then how they exit the body to um, go infect more people or animals. So I think most of the time I'm going to be talking about humans, but if you're going into the veterinary field, this also applies to animals. So we're going to have, over on the left, we have the portals of entry. So microorganisms have to get past our barriers. And then we have adhesion, which is in the yellow. So the microorganism has to attach to the host cells. Once your microorganism is attached, it adheres to the host cells, then it can invade. So this is where the microorganism, it makes pathways into the cells. Then once you have invasion, your microorganism will go through multiplication, so it's going to reproduce over and over, it's starting to grow and starting to spread throughout the body. The microorganism will um, find its target, so infection over the target. So some microorganisms are very specific, they're going to attach specific attack specific tissues and then once those microorganisms get to those tissues then it's going to cause disease so it's going to start to damage the tissues and then we have finally the portal of exit so the microorganism can leave the host to go find a new host so we're going to kind of go through this line so we're going to start with the portals of entry so becoming established the microorganism has to get into the body, and these are called the portals of entry. Um, these are characteristic routes that microorganisms follow to enter the tissues in the body. So there's lots of portals of entry, so basically any um, part of your body that has a hole in it that's exposed to the outside environment, that's a portal of entry. So like your nose, your mouth, um, let's see, the urogenital tract, for example. Um, if you have a cut in your skin, then the um, microorganism can get in through that cut. So there's exogenous agents. These are pathogens that originate from outside of the body. 
So this is when you touch like a door handle, for example, or someone sneezes on you, and then the microorganism can enter into any of these portals of entry. Or we have the endogenous agents, and again, those are microorganisms, they already exist on your body, it's part of your normal flora, but somehow they get into an area of the body where they're not normally found, and then they can grow and cause disease. So you've seen this endogenous um, agent, endogenous pathogen, quite a few times already in this chapter. Um, so hopefully you kind of understand what that is by now. Pathogens and infect during pregnancy. Um, so this is different, um, different diseases that can show up during pregnancy, and it's called S-T-O-R-C-H, Storch. So syphilis, toxoplasmosis, other disease, so hepatitis B, AIDS, chlamydia, um, rubella, cytomelgovirus, herpes simplex virus. So these are pathogens that can um, get into the fetus through the placenta. So even if your um, microorganism gets into one of these portals of entry, you still need a certain number of those cells to get in, and that's called an infectious dose, or an ID. So an infectious dose, it's the minimum number of microbes that are required for the infection to proceed to actually get you sick. And microbes that have small infectious doses have a greater virulence because if, um, for example, if you look at this chart, the first one, measles, in order to get measles, all you need is one virus to get into your respiratory tract. So it's very, very small infectious dose. So if you get that one virus, you're probably most likely going to get measles. Whereas if you go down, if you look at like cholera, for example, you need a lot of cholera cells to enter into the body in order to develop that disease. Um, so not only does the agent have to get in, but you have to get a certain number of those viruses or their cells to get into that portal of entry. Once your microorganism gets into the host through one of those portals of entry, then we have to have adhesions. So we have to have the microorganism actually attached to the host cells. So microorganisms are going to gain a stable foothold at the portal of entry, and they do this by using their fimbrae. So up at the top you have these purple bacteria covered in the short little hair-like fimbrae. Those fimbrae, if you remember way back um, at the beginning of the class, the fimbrae are used for attachment. So they just help that bacteria cell attach onto the host cell and hold on. Um, we also have flagella that can be used for adhesion. Um, the flagella help the bacteria move through to different parts of the body. Um, the glycocalyx, which is that outer sticky covering made up of carbohydrates or sugars, that helps the bacteria stick together. Um, if you look at image B, so in the middle, we have the capsules, which are um, one type of capsule is a glycocalyx, the other is a slime layer. So those capsules, they help the bacteria cells stick together and stick to their host cell. Um, if you're looking at a eukaryotic organism, like a parasitic worm, for example, they have cilia. If you think of tapeworms, they have suckers or hooks that they use to attach onto the host, or barbs. And then if you're looking at a virus, Viruses, they have envelopes of spikes on them that help them attach to the host cell. And that's shown in the final image, so image C at the bottom. And then in addition to attaching to the host cells, these bacteria, they also have to survive our host defense mechanisms. And we'll look at the different types of defense mechanisms more in the next chapter. Um, but to kind of give you some idea, we have an initial response of host defense mechanisms from white blood cells or the phagocytes. So phagocytes, what they do is they track down bacteria or other microorganisms and they engulf that bacteria and destroy it. But some bacteria cells, they have anti-phagocytic factors that they use to avoid this process, to avoid this phagocytosis. Um, so one thing is they have that slime layer or those capsules, which makes it hard for the white blood cells to grab onto the bacteria or makes 
it hard for the white blood cells to digest that bacteria. So if an organism has the ability to produce a slime layer capsule, it's going to help them survive the host defense mechanisms. If your bacteria does get into the white blood cell, it, some of them can actually survive. So some bacteria have the ability to survive intracellular phagocytosis, so actually live inside of the white blood cells and then cause harm and cause the person to get sick. Um, so the image here it's showing we have bacteria cells in the blue and then they have their green capsule around them. That capsule is helping those bacteria to not be engulfed by that white blood cell. So they're avoiding the phagocytosis. If the bacteria, it attaches to the host, so we have adhesion, it survives the host defense mechanisms, then it can enter into the host tissue. So some pathogens, they produce something called a secretion system. And um, you can see this in the image. So we have salmonella. They um, produce one of these secretion systems. This secretion system, basically the salmonella produces a tube that pumps in certain proteins into our host cell. That signals to the host cell that it should engulf that bacteria cell. So you can see that our host cell in kind of the pinkish is going to engulf that yellow salmonella cell and bring it into the cell. So we insert these specialized virulence proteins and it directs the host cell to engulf the bacteria cell. Once the bacteria cell is brought into the tissues, it can, for example, lead to a systemic infection. It can get into the bloodstream or go further into deeper tissues. Um, so this is one way that bacteria can enter into the host tissues and get into more deeper infections. Then once the bacteria gets into the host cell, they can start causing the disease. So the bacteria are going to produce virulence factors. These are traits used to evade and establish themselves in the host. Um, some virulence factors, they determine the degree of the tissue damage that occurs, so the degree of the severity of the disease, so how sick that person or animal gets. So some bacteria cells, they produce exoenzymes that can cause damage to the host cell. So exoenzymes can destroy host cells, cause damage. Um, bacteria can also release toxins that will destroy the host cells. So break down the host cells and cause that person to become sick and have the disease. So some toxins um, some toxins are called exotoxins. So exotoxins are on the left-hand side. Exotoxins are released out of the bacteria cells. And exotoxins, exotoxins they target organs, um, and they damage these organs. So these can include the heart, muscles, blood cells, intestinal tract. Um, we're releasing these toxins. They can travel throughout the body. The endotoxins, these are actually found inside of the cell or they're part of the cell wall. So they don't, they aren't released and they can't travel to other parts of the body. The endotoxins, they just cause the person to feel sick. So like fever, tiredness, aches and pains. Um, they could go into shock, for example. So we kind of looked at um, this line here. So we looked at the portals of entry, we looked at adhesion, invasion, uh, multiplication, that's basically just the microorganisms, they go through binary fission, they multiply. Um, bacteria target specific tissues and then they can release different exoenzymes or toxins to cause damage to the host. And then finally we're going to look at the different portals of exit. So portals of exit, these are basically kind of the same as the portals of entry. Um, so pathogens, they can depart by specific avenues and um, can be spread to other people. So there's the respiratory portals of exit. So we have mucus, um, sputum, nasal drainage, drainage, saliva, so coughing, sneezing, that kind of thing. Skin scales, so we're constantly releasing skin cells. Um, feces, urine, so the urogenital tract, um, blood, so any basically any type of body fluid or anything coming out of the body is a portal of exit. 
And then finally, um, as you're going through these stages of a disease, they relate to the intensity of symptoms. So this graph on the x-axis, so on the bottom we have time, and then on the y-axis we have intensity of the symptoms. So when you're initially exposed to microorganisms, so when it's getting into the portal of entry, it's establishing itself, that's called the incubation period. So basically the microorganism is growing, it's multiplying. And then once you start to show the symptoms and signs of the disease, so you start to feel kind of off, um, so if you think about when you get a cold, you can always kind of tell that, you know, you're getting sick a little bit. That's called the prodromal stage, so the second stage. And then once you get past that, you start having more intense symptoms, you get into the period of invasion. This is when your tissues are getting destroyed, you feel really, really sick. Um, your symptoms are at their height, so up at the top. And then either you get some type of treatment or your body starts fighting off the disease, you start to get better over time. That's called the convalescent period, the final period, until that microorganism and the symptoms and signs are gone at the bottom. So this is kind of um, how a disease progresses through the intensity of the symptoms.